for me, guitar playing is the way that I get my voice out. There's nothing like sitting around, you know, you're singing along with that guitar and those chords are making you sing a melody that you wouldn't have sung before and everything. It's just nothing like that. And I don't do it with anything but guitar. I know that when life gets its most tenuous, that I can always pick that up and feel this level of joy that nothing else can give me. Nothing else can give me that. It's, it's finding a rhythm, finding a melody. I'm about to cry. Talking about it. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. A little town outside of Charleston, it's just a little suburb. And uh, I, I can't say I had a musical family, because no one played an instrument or anything, but uh, everybody could sing. Everybody sang in church. You know, my dad was a, a vocal group that, that traveled around that was kind of popular in our area and stuff. And so, uh, you know, singing's always been part of what I do. And me growing up, Al Green started it all. And, you know, and still to me is King. Ray Charles and, and you know, then I started getting the AM radio and you listen to everything and you're hearing Cheap Trick and you're hearing, you know, Buck Owens and you're hearing all that stuff that I would never hear because it's not in our record collection. But once I got my little, my cousin's little tape recorder and I sat in front of the, you know, and every time a song come on, you always miss the beginning, but you can, <laughs> you can, you know, put it on your little cassette tape there. And But that was musically, it was just about uh, trying to find great songs and great singers and that was all that really mattered. I grew up in um, suburban Maryland, it just was inspired by a lot of uh, the classic rock radio that was going on in the area. Just kind of learned all, all, a bunch of uh, great music through that. Zeppelin, The Who, The Beatles, classic rock, Jimi Hendrix, and then Van Halen came along and, and kind of changed the game a little bit. I loved Eddie so much, but I was never really into just trying to shred. But I also, I loved his riff writing and Jimmy Page's riff writing and then really more into like Pete Townsend and the whole idea of uh, building a song out into a story and all that. That was really influential on me, the Pete's approach. Oh yeah, it just goes with that, that, that. We've talked about that a million times. That's right on the surface. You know, I, I think a band that yeah, you probably couldn't tell that was was the Ramones. We weren't a punk band or anything, but their, their sensibility of playing the song and then finishing the song. And the energy, yeah. Yeah, it was something that was just totally it for us. I, I still think they're one of the best bands of all time. I, I, I kind of remember uh, picking it up as, as a left-handed kid. The guy that was teaching that was like a class full of kids, and he's like, oh man, I don't know how to teach you that way. You should probably flip it over. And so I learned a C chord right-handed, didn't and put it down for a couple years, didn't feel right or whatever. And then uh, somebody taught me how to play uh, TNT by ACDC the, with the little fifths. And once I realized I could play an ACDC song, I have never stopped since. And then once I started playing guitar, found some friends around the area that I you know, started jamming with and learning from. and. Uh, first band I was ever in was with Dean Felber from Hootie, and we were in the same high school band as well as same college band with Darius. So there was a lot of serendipity. Like we lived on the same dorm hall. We were both broadcast journalism majors, and we ended up in two classes together. One when we were hanging out partying on the hall, we realized we knew a lot of the same songs from all these different genres. We had, we had no idea like what direction we were heading. We were just playing our favorite songs, right? You know, we had a whole set like the first night. And uh, we were we decided we got I got the the chicken wing joint guy to let us play a show. E even right down to I always laugh about this if people ask about it, like when did Darius go country? I'm like like the first show we ever played. <laughs> he sung a Hank Williams yeah, Jr. Yeah, song, yeah. which I couldn't even believe, you know. So that happened right away. And we made the decision. All right, 
you know, we're going to go get real jobs or we're going to go do this band. And we were all all in, like, we're going to do this band. So we were already writing a bunch of songs at that point. Sony left the cover band he was in to come be in an original band with us. And the first song he brought in was Hold My Hand. that first set of covers we played is I think that it's indicative of, of the direction things went. We're like, we did not limit ourselves to it should sound like this. We covering a bunch of genres, so as we started writing songs, we didn't limit ourselves in that way either. And, and then I think from that, a sound just forms. I played just uh, what it feels like. Ernie Ballston feel Right, it's not, they're hard to press down, your fingers aren't killing you when you're done playing, and that, I like that about it. Mikey, my tech, is really big on gear, and so if he gets behind something, then I know it's good. He does all, he researches everything, and, all that. and so like, once he starts believing in something, I'm gonna give it a try, because I trust him. It's been however many years now we've been doing it, and I love him, I'm, I'm, I'm all in, so it feels right to me. One cool thing I've noticed lately about string gauge, I, I, I never thought about gauge. I've been playing tens my whole life on electric. Recently, I played a buddy's Strat and he had nines on it. And it felt, it was so easy to play. And I'm like shredding. I'm like, I'm, why am I so much better on this guitar? And he's like, yeah, I got nines on there. I'm like, ah, I didn't realize it made that much of a difference. There are no rules for songwriting. I always put that first for myself so I can write on any instrument and I can write without an instrument like our buddy Wyatt Durrett does. He doesn't play anything, he just writes from his head, you know? And so I like that about songwriting is that you can, the, the no rules aspect. Sometimes, it, differently, sometimes somebody would write a song and bring it in. You know, there's times when Mark brought me music and said, hey, write lyrics to this. You know, it, it was just all different, but we always felt like Anything we brought in that was basic, the four of us made into what it was, every time. And then, uh, I think in 92 or 93, we put out Coochie Pop that had a few of the songs that made Cracked Review on it. And that was, that was a turning point. We sold a buttload of them. That's, I mean, you know, grunge was king and nobody was looking for the little rock pop band from South Carolina. And we were selling more at our shows than we were even in the stores. Yeah. So that was like a bigger number even than the ones from the stores, you know. After you have something as big as Cracked Review was, what's next? And we, we really did try to, to make a, a record that was the next step for us. Yeah. So you would feel the growth, you know, like we didn't want to make another Cracked Review. I'm sure Atlantic Records would have appreciated that, but it's just not who we were at the time. And for us to keep going and doing all the shows a year, like night after night every year, and, you know, we had to have that fresh feeling of new music. And so we went into the studio with nearly 30 songs on Fairweather Johnson on our second record. So we, we put a lot of time into that and a lot of thought about how we wanted to, to do it and found our new direction and whatever that was. And we had already been playing a lot of the songs from Cracked Review for several years. So for us to keep going and doing all the shows year, like night after night every year, and, you know, we had to have that fresh feeling of new music. And so we kind of did the same process on the next few records, right? I mean, yeah, we, that process doesn't really change much when it comes to records. After that deal, we did a record on our own, which was Looking for Lucky after our Atlantic deal. And right after that was basically when Sony was ready to go off the road. He kind of came to us and said, hey man, no more touring for me. And we respected that. It would have been hard for us to say, all right, you're not gonna tour, we're gonna get a new drummer. That would have been a hard decision for us. I think we've been doing it for so long. When you really step back and take, take a look, it was time for us to take a break. We've been on tour every summer for 20 something years. That 
was also right around the time that Darius was looking at doing a, a, a country record deal, which, you know, we maybe could have kept going and do, he could have done both, but at the time it looked like it was way better for us to just go on hiatus here. And, and so he's, that, there began his country career. I got a roof over my head, the woman I love laying up in it. You know, when I came out, there wasn't anybody that looked like me on country radio, you know? And, and then you got all the people that I'm going to see that telling me, telling me that their audience would never accept a black country singer. I didn't expect much. You know, I didn't even think I'd get a record deal. I was going to do it with some buddies here in Charleston that we know that write. And, but, you know, when I had that first number one, uh, everything changed. has this magical ability to connect us to the spiritual world. And uh, as soon as you feel what it can do, you just you want to feel it again and again. And, and then really what happens is I'll go see him or go see one of my favorite bands or whatever or somewhere. I'll go see somebody live and just get blown away again by that. That always inspires me and makes me want to go do it again, you know. All I've wanted to do since I was four is play music for people. I don't need any motivation. I'm doing it because it's all I've ever wanted to do. And I still, it's all, it's still all I ever wanted to do.